something that I had to work at and still do work at quite a lot. Um, sitting trot, I really aren't built for it because I've got short legs and a big back side. Attractive, isn't it? That's it. So occasionally I'll go into rising trot and then into sitting trot and then into rising trot and then into sitting trot and then into rising trot just so that I don't hang on, I have to really concentrate on not getting tight in my knee really concentrate on not hanging on just and breathe and relax because I used to think because I was quite strong I used to go into the dressage test and think to myself right I'm strong enough to hold myself in that saddle for four minutes <laughs> oh, broke into canter again and that's what happens the more you the more you grip on, the more you bounce. Whereas if you just relax and let go, lean back and just let them trot in front of you. If it feels uncomfortable, don't hold yourself there. Back into rising, back into sitting. And you're just trying not to change anything. Just trying to keep that knee relaxed all the time. That's good. And again, when I'm teaching my horse's movement, when I'm teaching them shoulder in or whatever movement it may be, I teach a lot in walking canter because I'm definitely a better rider in canter than I am in trot naturally. Oh, we'll start and have a canter again. And again, you can see now his reactions are starting to speed up. His reactions are starting to become a little bit more relaxed. When I ask something, he starts to answer a little bit smoother and quicker. Oh I'm just going to put the counter up a little bit. That's enough. And then I'm going to start to move him sideways now. So I'll start to spiral the circle down at this end and then move him out. Circle down and quietly push him out with the inside leg. Again I want I don't want to be gripping or shunting him across a just nice light leg and asking him to move sideways. I'm not too worried at the minute whether he falls out through the shoulder, whether he does anything wrong, just as long as I can start to get that reaction. my inside rein. The minute he softens and moves away, I soften my inside rein back to him. Good boy. And then I start to move him sideways down the long side. So let's come down here and start to, again, put him in a bit of a shoulder in my inside leg near the girth. All I do is turn off as I'm going to go across the diagonal. So I'm going across the diagonal and then catch him with my inside leg. And we, again, we don't need a huge angle, just a reaction. And that starts to make him step underneath more with his right hind leg. I pick a line and I just ride to it. Opposite, I'm going across towards Tony with the camera and then move him sideways. Sideways, sideways. Look at this pose. I'm aiming for some light pose. And yeah, all of a sudden, he has a bit of a wobble. He's not by any means established in any movements. Because he finds everything easy, it's easy to think that he's a lot further on than he is. So I've just got to test myself by looking and aiming. Looking and aiming. You're right, it was you. <laughs> That's it, and then we'll change the rein and try the same on the other end. Into trot, 